<coughs> All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about milling, turning, and drilling. Um, I'm going to switch up today, and we're going to kind of talk about it a little bit, and then we'll watch videos, and we'll play with the CNC a little bit. <coughs> so when we're talking about machining, we've got a couple of terms we need: cutting feeds and speeds. Um, also, before we get to this, what tool, what materials may we use tools? Or what materials are our tools made out of? Carbide. And we get carbide inserts, tools. And what's the other main material? Steel. Yeah. Um, yeah, high speed steel. It's a special tool that's hardened and set up for, for tooling. <coughs> so the speed, that's how fast the cutting, the whatever's doing the cutting, is touch the material. Um, and so those can be done in surface feet, feet per minute, is usually what we call it. And so based on the material type, they have different recommended speeds. Um, starting at like 50 for steel and up to 350 for aluminum, 800 for brass. It's kind of the soft material, the less it's going to resist, the more you can, um, the faster you can go through it. <coughs> Feeds is how fast you're actually moving the tool through the material. So the speed would be how fast the, the cutter is turning, and the feed is how fast you're going through it. So on a mill, the spindle is turning, that's your speed, and the feed is how fast it's moving um, in inches per minute, usually. Um, if you're doing a lathe, the speed is how fast the part is turning, and the feed is how fast you're moving your tool. On a drill, your feed is how fast you're pushing, the, how, how fast you're pressing the drill down on it. <coughs> so that, that's your feed, so. Um, that. Also, how fast you go is also turned by how deep you cut. So your cutting depth affects how fast you can, you can cut it. So if you take a deeper bite out of it, can you go as fast? No. No. If you take a shallower bite, can you go fast? No. Yeah. Can you take a really shallow bite? <laughs> it, it depends. There's a there's this point where that if you're trying to take a too shallow piece, it's not gonna make a chip and it's just gonna skip across the top. So it's like you wanna try to cut like cheese or something, you cut, you cut a big thick piece, you go through it easy. You try and cut a real thin piece and you always like go off the end. Same, same idea. <clears throat> and then we also have what's called up milling and down milling. So in up milling, you're cutting into the piece. So the piece is going this way, and you're cutting into it like that. Down milling, you're cutting away from the piece. And you come down into it, and you kind of pull off into the slack. What do you think affects those? Which one's better? Kind of depends. If you, for most things, down milling is, is really good. You can take a bigger chunk because you're, it's getting, it's releasing it. But if you're trying to take that thinner piece, then up milling because then you can actually grab into it. And those are also different instances when you want to do it. Um, but yeah, usually you want to do it down milling. <coughs> so we're talking about a lathe. We're talking about turning. So. I'm go back. Do so, anyone know what that's called? Was that just a lathe? What kind of lathe? It's called a gear lathe or an engine lathe. Because in here there's a bunch of gears. And these levers all change how those gears go to affect how fast it spins and how fast the, the lead screw here spins to make this go back. So, on here, let's copy this. So, this right here, that's a chuck. So the chuck holds the material. <clears throat> you can see the teeth are like this. And so it can hold small pieces inside there, by the outside. 
or it can hold the, the inside of bigger pieces on the outside of it. You usually have three teeth so it kind of self-centers. They do make them four teeth. Um, and they also have ones that are just a plate that you can screw into. Why would you have a four tooth one so you can get stuff off center or uh, just a plate that you can mount to? What would be the benefit of that? Not yeah, you're trying to hold on to an end that's not circular. So maybe you've milled that end, and so that part you need to have it off center so that something else will be centered. <coughs> what about a collet? What's a collet? That's kind of a collet because um, it's, it's got a taper on it. But it, a tall collet usually would be a piece of you're looking at from the end. It's kind of like that, and it's got some things in it so it can get bigger or smaller as you uh, squeeze on it. Like a pipe threader has it to hold pipe to thread? Uh, maybe. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it holds like if you can put a pipe in it and tighten that down and it holds the pipe yeah. that way you can mill it yeah, or whatever. Exactly. So it'll it'll hold something that's round just by you're tightening, you're compressing, it'll shrink. It'll kind of compress on it and hold it still. And so instead of using a chuck, you can use a collet so you have smaller pieces. Because it's it's now it's real easy to tighten down. You don't have to tighten the chuck, you just slam a lever and it tightens the collet. It kind of pulls it back, tightens it. <clears throat> also, um, on mills, they use collets for holding the tools. Um, and then the center is over here. So this is the tailstock. And then the tailstock goes to the center. So you have a long piece. You can support it by the, the chuck or the collet on one side. And the tailstock with the center on the other side. And the centers can either be just a solid piece or they can have bearings and, and remove. So that would be called a live center. This right here is the, the carriage. It has a tool holder here. And so the carriage, you need to move manually, or you can lock it to the lead screw, and it'll move at whatever rate you've set over here. So you can set it up so that it's going to be so many inches a minute, and then you just hit the lever, and it'll start moving along with that at that rate. <coughs> so. Um, so we also have CNC lathes, right? <clears throat> so then take all the same ideas and put it onto a CNC. So milling, <clears throat> we've got a few different types of mills. And actually two main ones, vertical and horizontal. And these ones are all kind of variations of vertical. So vertical mill. Is kind of like that. So you hold the tool and a collet here. <clears throat> you have a table, moves back and forth, the knee that moves up and down. And so your work goes there, and you get the machine this way. Probably the most common type of mill. Anyone used one before? No? Yeah. <clears throat> and then so this is a real basic one. And from here you can get digital readouts to tell you digitally how far you're moving the table or the knee um, to get a little more precision. Then we have horizontal mills. So what's different about that? Yeah. Instead of being down like this, just holding a bit in it like a drill. <clears throat> now it's got a big bar with a big cutting tool on it. So what do you think is the benefit of this? Deeper yeah, deeper cuts, harder cuts. Um, had Malibu Boats and they have a piece that they put a, a big like one inch radius fillet on the corner of it. And before they were doing it on the vertical mill and they're using like a half inch ball mill going back and forth to, to contour the piece. And now with this they have a one inch radius roll over. Endover cutter, so it's just kind of the opposite. 
and they just swoop one pass. They just put it through one pass, it's done. So it's a lot faster to, to do it. Um, then what's a fourth axis? So those are both three axis mills. So you have horizontal, vertical, or X, Y, and then Z. So what's a fourth axis? Tilting head. You got tilting head or a rotating table. Usually a rotating table would be the fourth axis. So they'll put a table here that can rotate. It could be this one stays straight, and then this will rotate for the fourth axis. So I could do either one. And then we have fifth axis. Kind of this is what you're saying for the rotating head. So if you take it, make this flat, it's still it's four four axis. Make this straight, it's four axis. You can do them both, and it's five axis. You could also make it where the head stays straight, but now this rotates. And the table turns. So it's got a turntable here to turn it for the fifth axis. Or you can do the big boy fifth axis and have it where this now, your table moves, or the table stationary, and this now rotates, pivots, <coughs> so you can kind of get into everywhere. Goes up and down, turns, moves over. <clears throat> so, questions on those? And then, what was the router? Okay. Not, not the hound router. No. <laughs> the same idea. Well, what's that used on? Wood. wood. <clears throat> so, routers is one that's meant to work on wood primarily. So, you can get five axis routers that are meant to work on wood. Um, <clears throat> or they can get, most of the time you get a three axis router. What do you, what do you think the difference between a, one meant for wood and one meant for metal would be? Speed. Yeah, speed. What else? Speed. Yeah. Sometimes. Usually for wood we just use high speed, we want to use car carbides. But what else about the machine itself? Would it need, would it need to be as heavy duty? No. Yeah, you wouldn't need schooling. The frame itself could be a little lighter weight. <coughs> so. Also, the table, instead of being, let me go back. Right, can't really see. On the table, it's called T slots, there's screws on the table. So you can put a vise down, you can bolt the vise down to it. On routers, usually you don't have that. Usually it's a flat piece um, that you can tape stuff down to, or you can do, do some other, you can drill some fixtures in to hold it. Or you do a vacuum table where it's got a little hole so it'll suck the part down to it. <clears throat> and we're kind of doing it in a variation. We're, on ours, we're just double stick tape because we're not cutting anything real heavy that needs the, the, the strength of a, all the, the hold downs. So questions on milling? All right, so drilling. What is this? No, drill bit. What kind of drill bit? What? No. It's just a standard drill bit. What's, what are they called? Drill bit? Yeah. Drill. No. It's a twist drill. Really? Yeah, it's called a twist drill. <laughs> what other kind of drill bits are there? Auger. What? Auger. Yeah, there's auger bits. What else? Forstner bits, right? Have you guys seen those? Same those are the ones that are Kind of bigger diameter, they're kind of, kind of, kind of an edge to cut with. Like a unit bit? Oh, like a spade bit? No. That's a spade drill. Yeah. Here, boy. That's a 
Forstner. It's, it's, that's not like a whole, a whole no, saw? No, it's mainly, mainly used for, for wood. And then we have whole saws, right? That's more like a saw than it is a drill bit. So mainly coarseners, spades, and twist. So in metals, usually we use twist drills. What is boring? Not me. <laughs> Say me. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you asked. Closer to the tolerance. Yeah, it's a way to get close, uh, close tolerance and drill. Because drill, like, when you drill, do you get a round hole? No. No. What's your hole look like? Doesn't it look something like. Yeah, like that. It's kind of a triangular thing. That's not a really good example. But. Something kind of like that. So, boring is a way to get a more, a better circle. So, in boring, what we do is we actually have a bar that has a, a bit on it. So now. When that's being turned, or when this is turned, you're getting a really good circle, or a lot better than drilling. So it's like smoothing it out from as it's Yeah, spin. it's just like you're turning the outside of it, now you're turning the inside of it. So you drill first and then you bore it. Yeah, yeah, you have to drill a small hole to get the boring bar in, and then you can start working on it. You know, what's, a, what's a ring? Safer. Yeah, you can do taper reams. <clears throat> so you can use a ream to, to take a hole and make it into a taper. This ream is kind of like that, or like this. So this one is not tapered, so this is a straight, ta a straight ream. So it'd be used, first you drill the hole, and then you go through the ream to get it to, the, to a better circle. Another way of making it brown. You can see because it's all the right diameter, it's not just the twist. <clears throat> so it'll, it'll even out that, that, that circle better. And what's that? Countersink? Yeah, it's kind of like a ream. But then it's got this little nub here that's to fit in your hole that you've already drilled. So the counter stink centers with it. What's the purpose of the ring to use? What, these? Yeah. To cut out the interior. Why? It's going down. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're cutting that hole in depth all at once. So. What about that? What's that? Yeah. I still can't see. <laughs> I know. I had the remote upside down. So it's center drill. So you can use it first to get started. You know, if you got a big drill and it wants to wander, you could use this to kind of get it started. Especially enough on a using a lathe to get the a little cone to use the center on the other side. You use a center drill to, to get it. <clears throat> What's another way you can, if you're going to drill a hole, that you can make it so that it's not going to wander? Center punch. A center punch. I have a really steady hand. <laughs> no, that never works. <laughs> You just you find your center, you line it up, and you press on it, and it'll it'll make a little indention so that that way your drill will start right dead center. It's not going to wander off. And then what are taps used for? 
Making threads. For making threads. So, which one do we use most often? Usually we'll, we'll do the starting. Depends on where you're going. What's the difference between all those? Look down here. Oh, the taper on them? Yep. <clears throat> so usually, an intermediate, intermediate is called a gun tap, or I mean a, a starting is called a gun tap. Yeah. Don't they also have pipe thread taps? Yeah, they also have pipe ones. I'm talking about straight threads. Um, <clears throat> but so you can see the different, and you know, we've talked about this in other classes too. Um, but this is why when you drill a blind hole, usually you leave some extra space at the end that's not threaded so that it can accommodate for that piece right here. If you want it thread all the way to the bottom, first you go through with the starting, and then depending on the material, either do the intermediate or jump straight to the finish. <clears throat> if you're doing stainless, you got to pretty much do three. If you're doing aluminum, you jump right to it. If you're doing brass, you might be able to do it all with the finish. <clears throat> Did you want to hand tap something before? Yes. Yeah. What do you have to do to it when you're tapping it? Back off. Yeah, you have to back, back, back off, back right? Back what do you do when you back off? Clear the chips. Anyway. Yeah, you're you're breaking the breaking the chips, kind of clearing them out, because um, you don't because when you make one long chip, it's bad. Um, it gets in the, it's clogged stuff up. Um, so you want to go back? What? Breaks taps. Yeah, it breaks the taps because they, they get stuck. Um, and so the same thing with pretty much all of these machine methods that the chips that are coming off of it, you want to be kind of smallish. You never want to get a, nice, a big stream of chips coming off this continuous. That means that your cutting speed is too slow, or your feed's too slow. You can speed it up until they start breaking. <coughs> so, questions?